Okay, we're going to solve this differential equation. We have dp over dt is equal to t squared p minus p plus t squared minus 1. How can we do this? First of all, we shouldn't have any differential on the bottom, so let's multiply by dt on both sides. And I'll do that. So multiply by dt here and multiply by dt here, so they cancel each other out. And then on the left hand side, we just have dp. But then on the right hand side, we have the p right here as well. However, that's inside of this parentheses, and that's being multiplied with dt. How can we get these two p's possibly onto the left hand side along with the dp? This is a strategy. Because the p's are inside of this parentheses, and that's being multiplied with dt, our best hope is somehow we are going to factor this out, and hopefully we can get a factor that has nothing but just p and maybe some numbers inside, and then we can get to uh, divide both sides by that factor. That's how we can get the p terms down to the left-hand side. With that being said, let's factor this out. First, both of these terms have p, so we can look at these two terms and then factor out the p, and then we have t squared minus 1, and then let's put on the rest, plus t squared minus 1. All this is still multiplying with dt. And as you can see, this is technically like a factor, and then we are lucky because these two are exactly the same. So with that being said, dp on the left hand side still, I can factor out this and that together. So we have t squared minus 1 that's being factored out. And what's the left over? We have p is being left over plus, and we have like 1, p plus 1. And then we still have the dt. So you see, that's what I mean by we must somehow factor it so that we have a factor that has a p term and maybe with some constants and we can get to uh, divide both sides by this factor. And then the procedure that we we're doing er earlier was factor by grouping. Anyways, then we divide both sides by p plus 1 so that these two factors cancel. And then finally, I bring all the p's together onto the left-hand side. Okay, and here we have dp over p plus 1, and that's equal to t squared minus 1 dt. We are ready to integrate both sides. Let's do it. So integrate this side, integrate this side. This is the integral of 1 over p plus 1, right? The dp is just like on the side, doesn't really matter. So the answer for that is going to be ln absolute value of p plus 1. And we don't need to worry about to put a plus c on the left hand side. Just worry to put a plus c on the right hand side. This is equal to integral of t squared is one third t to the third power and then minus one. Integrate that, we have minus t. And then we put plus c constant on the right hand side. And we're kind of done, but then whenever we can, we should try to solve for p. Okay, the, the variable right here. Well, this is instead of the uh, ln, so we will do e to that power and then e to this power. This way, the e and the ln cancel out. So we have, and by the way, right here, you have to be super careful. Technically, I only cancel out the e and the ln, but then I still have the absolute value. So I still have the absolute value p plus 1. And then on the right-hand side, I have the following. I have e to this power. And then you see that these two are the function part. The c is a constant. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to separate the function part and then the constant part. I'm going to first write down e to this power, e to the, uh, I can write this as t to a third power over 3, and minus t. But then, because I'm adding the c, so I can write this as multiply by c, um, e to the c power. Because if you multiply these two things, what do we do is we can just add the exponents. So if you have this adding with another exponent, I can separate them into multiplying e to this power times e to that power. So that's the thing. Okay? Because here we have e is being a constant, and perhaps I should label this as c1, and this is still c1. e is a constant, c1 is also a constant, a constant raised to a constant power, I can call that another constant. So I can call that c2. So I have absolute value p plus 1. This is c2. Let me put that right here first, c2. 
and then this is the function part I cannot do anything with it so it's e to the t to the third power over 3 minus t okay I'm not going to separate them because uh, this is just as fine even though I can bring separate them but that's too bizarre I would say okay how can we get rid of the absolute value we can do so by putting plus minus on the right hand side so right here I'm going to get, uh, get rid of the absolute value I'm just going to write down p plus 1 but then on the right hand side I must include the plus minus and we have the c uh, 2 right here and then we have this function part e to the t over t to a third power over 3 minus t okay which one is it the positive version or the negative version in fact we don't know unless we have like an initial condition and then this is like positive 1 times c2 or negative 1 times c2 it's going to be a constant again so I might as well just call that another constant so this together all this together turns out to be another constant and let me keep track so let me just say that's c3 and this is e to the t to the third power over 3 minus t I'm almost done with isolating the p all I need to do is minus 1 on both sides so we have p equals to c3 e to the t to the third power over 3 minus t and then at the end we have the minus 1 this is not the this is not part of the exponent this is this is just a regular minus 1 okay and then we are done so we can just kind of box the answer and if you leave this um, answer on the test it's totally fine but then uh, once we are done we look at the constant which is we have c3 right the book likes to just replace this with a number k so we'll do that right here so that was the constant and this is it